Don't shoot me in the <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so, we started last week. Ah, there we go. We started last week a two week series. So, um, this is. This is a message that's primarily for the youth, but not solely for the youth. I like every message to speak to all of us, to, to any person, doesn't matter their background, age, or any of those things. So I, I, uh, I trust that, that you will find something for you today. However, where is Kennedy? Kennedy, do you really need to sit by your parents today? Could you possibly sit right here? Because you're going you're gonna to stand in proxy for all the youth because there are some youth that are not here today. You can stay right there. I can see you. Okay, you stay right there. All right. Huh? Okay. I can go sit. You can? Yeah. All right. Well, come on over here. You Right there. I, I can be looking at you the whole time. So... Um, Oh, okay, yes, yes, all right, there's two of us, all right, it's growing, the group is growing. Um, I know that there's a, a few more youth out trust in confidence in you, that you call us out to go to places in this world, in this life, Lord God, to stand on holy ground, solid ground, Lord, to live in such a way that we make you, that you are magnified through our life that we are able to herald you and your truth and your gospel. Lord God, I thank you for the generation that, that's, that's coming, Lord God. I thank you there's always another generation coming, Lord, and I thank you for that. God, we in this room today want to be a part of helping shape that generation. Lord, use us in a powerful way. Lord, I pray for every every person in here today, Lord, that, that you would capture our own hearts, our own minds, our own souls, Lord God, for these things. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Psalm 127, last week, if you'll move that forward for me, please. There we go. Behold, children are a gift of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows... In the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. I love that. I love that passage, that phrase. That's the thing that all of this is hitched on, but it, it's so much bigger than, than, a, um, than a metaphor or a figure here. But like arrows in the hands of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. How blessed is the man whose quiver, y'all know what a quiver is? For some, probably everybody does. Here's a quiver right here. Holds the arrows, right? You could be transferred from mom and dad. I'm handing her or him back to you, Lord. And this is what I've done with him or her now. Because once you leave, there's only a little bit of guidance that mom and dad can give. Once you're sailing out there, we can come along and try to course correct a little bit, but you're on your own now, okay? You're out there you, because you're an adult now, and you're living in this world. And so our time kind of comes to an end. We can keep praying if it starts to go like this. Oh, Lord, give them a lift. <laughs> and there, God does something, you know. And so, uh-oh, they're, they're veering this way, and we're like, we get a chance to have a conversation, and it helps to pull you back. We're praying for people in your life on the journey. Now, new friends, new adults, people who are chasing after Jesus the same way you want to be, right? Okay, that's what you're called to your destiny. Now, let me tell you, for a while, you've lived your life most of the time in the safety of a quiver, right? This has been your home. This is mom and dad. This is youth group. This is church. This is all those godly friends that you've invested and spent time with. 
and you've lived in the safety of this quiver. I haven't had one of those in about a jillion years, but now you got one because I wanted you as a young person to write these down, put them in your Bible and keep them because I'm gonna give you four life decisions that will help you be one of God's redeeming arrows, okay? One of God's redeeming arrows. Are they the only four? No, but they pretty much capture it all, I think. You, there's little other parts that you can go down into, but if you'll get these, make these four decisions. Now, let me, let me tell you something. Mom and dad can't make this decision for you. We can't make this decision for you. We've done our part. We've done the shaping part, the sending part. Now, in the shaping part, there's, there's, the, there's the, the shapers and then there's the shaped, okay? What are, what are you young ladies? Are you the shapers or the shaped? Can't hear you. Shaped, shaped, shaped. that's right. It requires cooperation. It requires willingness. It requires a desire to embrace the shaping, right? And y'all have done that. But now you have to take ownership of this thing because now you're, you're, you're moving on. You're, 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 leaving, you know, you're, you're, you're leaving the quiver, okay? And you're being sent. So now what decisions are gonna guide you moving forward? So here's the first one. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, you got some blanks in there. And during your what? Say it for me. Childhood. Isn't that the place kids love? Man, they're always ha happy except those moments when they're crying or mad over a little something. They lost their toy. But, but to enjoy childhood, kids just naturally love childhood. They don't have the same pressures and responsibilities upon them quite yet. So rejoice young man, young woman, during childhood, and let your heart be pleasant during the days of young manhood. In, in other words, now that you're beginning to emerge out of childhood into young adulthood, he says, let your heart be pleasant. It's almost natural, unless some really tough things have happened, it's almost natural that you feel this way. Next phrase. And follow. Now, now, when have you ever seen the Bible say something like this? We're told, follow the impulses of your heart and the desires of your eyes. That kind of sounds like that could get you in trouble, doesn't it? Follow the impulses of your heart and the desires of your eyes. Actually, there is an affirmation to that. He's actually speaking to the fact that, that young people, and all of us to some extent, but we learn not to always be governed by our impulses, right? And every desire that our eye wants, you know. But he's saying, hey, go for it, man. Follow the impulses of your heart and the desires of your eyes, but let me qualify it for just a moment, he says. Yet, know that God will bring you to judgment for all these things. What things? The impulses and the desires. He's saying he is not youth or naive. They don't see reality yet as they fully need to. Experiences of life, the word of God, all of these things help us alleviate the naivety and actually gain wisdom, okay? So that's the first one. The second one is impulsive, right? You're impulsive. Kids, I didn't hear any amens. How many of you are impulsive? Because one minute you, yeah, that would sound like a mother. So, so one minute you want this, I just gotta have this, it's all about this, and five hours later, oh no, I really want this. This is what'll make me happy. This is what life's all about, this thing right here, and we're, we're in the impulses of our heart. I feel this one minute, I feel that the next minute. We're going back and forth, and you think the whole world's gonna come crashing, falling down if I don't get to fulfill the impulse that I feel right now, or the desire of my eye is on that thing, and I want it, right? So, impulsive. And the third one, 
is a false sense of your own immortality. What is that? What is what is immortality? Not being what? Oh, not being human. Uh, that that uh, no, not, not exactly, but close enough. We'll 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 spin off of it. I- immortal means that you will live on. You'll never die. There's eternal. There's a sense of e- eternality. There's a sense of invincibility. Okay, so so you have this false sense of I can do anything and it won't hurt me. I can run out and do this in life and I'll be just fine. I'm, I can rise above it. I can conquer that thing. It may bring everybody else down, but not me. What he means to remember him, it means to seek him now in the days of your youth. Can I see the rest of the verse? And then the next, oh, so remove, excuse me, so remove vexation from your heart and put away pain from you today because childhood and the prime of life are fleeting. So let's just look at that one really quick. Childhood is past. You're entering into the prime of your life. But can I tell you, those days are quickly going, I mean, they are fleeting. That's what it means to fleet. It's, It's passing quickly, okay? In fact, You've, if you live to be 80 and you live 20 year, every 20-year segments, okay, you've lived the longest one already. Does that make sense? The first 18 to 20 years is longer than the next 18 to 20 years. And that's, you know, or, yeah, did I say that right? Yeah, so the next ones are getting shorter and shorter and shorter. How is that possible? I know it's some kind of physics quantum thing, you know, that it's all whatever, that the longer you live, the quicker it goes, okay? So, so here you are. You need to understand that now in the day, here, here's the rest of the verse. Can you pull me up there? Yeah, there we go. Remember your creator in the what? When? When, when you get older, when you got time, after you get your college education and you get married and you're starting to have kids, this is the time I wake up one day and go, oh yeah, I have a creator. I should serve him. I should live many years. Let him rejoice in them all. But let him remember that the days of darkness, for they shall be many. Everything that is to come will be futility. What is this pleasant light in days of darkness? In chapter 12, verse 1, he says, remember your creator in the days of youth before the evil days come and the years draw near when you will say, I have no delight in them. I'm not trying to be morbid, but, but it's, in, it's in our young, younger years that life seems so bright and light and we're excited about it and everything. But there's days coming when we age and things stop working as well, okay? And the whole rest of that description in the following verses in chapter 12 is a description of aging, And he's trying to say, because what we want to do is we want to kick the can down the road. We want to say, I will serve God sometime in my future. It gets harder and harder to do so. He is saying, now is the time, not later, now, not later, now. Let's say it together. Now, not later, now, not later. This is the time to forego the the things of of this world and and focus in on our creator, to know him, to walk with him, it gets harder in in those other days. What we do in the latter days, we are able to do, we are able to sustain because we walked with him in our youth. That's the that's the thing. that that you want to grab from that, okay? That's the first principle. Let's move on to the second one, okay? Number two, moving on. Oh, wait, wait, that's up, back up. Never mind. Go read this in the New Living Translation because it's kind of interesting. Okay, move on. Something that never changes. In a changing, chaotic, crazy world that we're trying to figure out how to do life and, and it... I, I, I've watched it in my lifetime change from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. But the one thing that remains constant is God and his word. Scripture. 
couple of verses really quick and we're just gonna move on. Romans 12, two, you're very familiar with this. And do not be conformed to this world. To be conformed, to be put into its mold, into its shape, that's the force that the world is trying. There are many voices in our culture. Many voices saying this, that, and another. How many podcasts do you listen to? Man, just, you, you can listen to all kinds of voices, good voices, bad voices, some that sound really good, you know, make arguments for this, that, and another. But when you bring that back to the word, what does the word say? We're not to allow the world, its voices, its influences to shape us. You want to be a redeeming arrow, don't you? I'm sorry to just look at you four, but over here too and right back here. Okay, you, you want to be an arrow in the hand of a mighty God that is first themselves redeemed and then they're going into the world to be one of God's arrows of redemption for others, okay? You don't want to fall into those pits. You don't want to... So, so, so here's the first thing. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How, where are you going to have your mind transformed? Well, I go stick it in a bucket of garbage, you know, or for your life, for all of these things. Let's move on to the third one. Speaking of profitable, profitable, not lawful. Profitable, not lawful. So, here's what, let's go ahead and read the verse. All things, Paul says, are lawful for me, but not all things are profitable. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are profitable. Let's see the rest of the verse. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. Okay, what does this mean? And there's a context, and I'd love to just go right off into it because he applies this truth, this principle uh, to life. But what is he saying? All things are lawful for me, but not all things are profitable. See, we often ask the wrong question. And young people are notorious for this, okay? But we all are notorious for it. We want to know where the line is that I can come up to. So if this is the line, you know, and I've come up to it and I go, that's God's law, <laughs> okay? That line is God's law. Now on this side, question. Because you're asking, is this good for me? God may, God may have no law against this particular thing, and yet you might get in, in it and you find that, man, this is not good for me. This is not profitable for me. So what kinds of things might we be talking about? Well, maybe we're talking about some of our use of technology, social media stuff. Maybe we're talking about some of the music we listen to. I can't find a law in the Bible that says we can't listen to certain styles or types of music, and I'm not on a tirade against any type, styles or types of music. But maybe I need to ask the question, if I'm listening to this stuff, it, I, there's not a law against it necessarily, but is it good for me? Is it helping me or hurting me? And man, you can take that principle of, and ask that question, is this profitable for me? Is this profitable for me? Now, he has an application of this when he says, all things may be lawful for me, meaning not everything's lawful, are they? He's not saying everything's lawful. He's, he, obviously, lying, stealing, cheating, murder, these are unlawful things, right? The Bible says they're not. But when he says all things are lawful, he's meaning all things that God has defined as lawful does not necessarily mean that God wants that for our life, that it's profitable. You, that's the question we have to ask because one of the things we have to look at, all things are lawful for me, 
But Paul is saying, I will not be mastered by anything. Young people get mastered by the things that they feel a liberty in. There was no law against it, so I splurged, I poured myself into it, but it, it now has, a, it controls me. I'm mastered by it. That's not the place that you and I need to be. Now, he uses this same principle again about three or four chapters later. Can I see the next one? 1 Corinthians 10. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are profitable. Same phrase. All things are lawful, but not all things edify. Now he changes something. In the top one, I'm not gonna be mastered by anything. It's about about me. I don't want, I have this liberty, but if I exercise it, oh my gosh, it's not profitable. Okay, and I've, I don't want to be mastered by it. Now in this verse, so all things are profitable, but not all things edify. He's not talking about self-edification. To edify means to build up, to encourage that it's good. He's talking about others. Let's see the rest of this. Very next verse, let no one seek his own good, but only that of his neighbor. That's what he means by edify. He says, all things may be lawful to me, I can do it, but if I do it, it might hurt those around me. It won't edify my neighbor. Who's my neighbor? It's my friend, it's my coworker, it's my child, it's my spouse, it's whoever in my life who's looking to me and they're watching me and they're thinking, gosh, if he can do it or she can do it, then I can do it. And yet, there's a place in our Christian faith. There is a place in our life where, where we live above what's, what I'm free to do and we make choices I will not practice that. I will not be a part of that because I know that if I do that, others are looking at me, they're gonna follow me, and they're gonna, they're gonna fall in a pit deeper than I'm in. Does that make sense? Yeah, so, so this is a key life decision. Your first life decision is what? It's remember your creator now. Walk with him now. Do everything you can to know him now. That's a decision that you have to act upon every day. What's the second one? Scripture, not culture. I'm not making everything out in the culture being evil, but a whole heck of a lot of it is, okay? So, so we're, gonna, we're gonna be people of scripture, not culture. And the third thing is, we're gonna ask the question, is it profitable? Not just the question, is it lawful? Okay, and then here's the last one. Oh, man, back up. Ladies, and all of y'all out there, Okay, youth have a boatload of desires. Some are okay, some not so okay, okay? Now, this is what it tells you to do. Um, so, so right there is a whole pile of youthful desires. What does it tell you to do? What does that verse tell y'all to do? So I want y'all to flee over there. Flee, flee, there you go, okay, all right. Now, that's it. Boy, if you'll practice that. Now, come on back, come on back, come on back. Now, stop, stop right there for just a second. Now, it also tells us to run a different direction. Look at the rest of that verse. Pursue what? Faith. Righteousness. What is that? It's right choices, right living, okay? This isn't talking about your identity in Christ right now. This is talking about actually how you live, okay? So pursue, man, and if you're gonna pursue, okay, y'all, y'all step up here, come on. Y'all are gonna be obstacles. Y'all just get down here, just kind of spread out, kind of spread out here, Jeremiah, okay. All right, now, now as y'all are gonna pursue, 
Right over there is righteousness, faith, love, and joy. But these things are gonna be in the way to pursue. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to be persistent. I want righteousness. I want faith. I want love. Go for it. Let's go. There's some determination. Well, poor Jim. All right. Okay. Let's get, yeah, good hand. Y'all can, y'all can find a seat wherever you want to except our special group right over here. All right, thank you guys. So, almost done. That was fun. But in real life, it won't be fun. In real life, it'll just be the opposite. You'll wanna, you'll wanna pursue youthful lust and you'll wanna flee righteousness and faith and love because those cost you something. It's easy to pursue a, a desire, a youthful, impulsive <laughs> desire, right? It's easy to do that. It's hard to pursue God. It's hard, and, and we make a mistake if we tell you that it's, that it's easy to be a Christian. It is not easy to be a Christian. It is one of the hardest things I know to do. It is the hardest thing I've ever tried to do is to live the Christian life. I mean, it, it's costly. There's times you don't wanna do it, on and on and so forth. It is hard. Let's see, how do, how do I want to do this? Okay, so you represent the beginning of a choice, and you represent a consequence of a choice, okay? You're the choice, and you're the consequence, okay? So I'm going to make the decision. I come along here, and I find, you know, I'm gonna try to live the Christian life. I got a decision, I wanna be a Christian. So right here now, I'm gonna make the choice, I am going to be a Christian. But it's so hard, you know, I don't wanna read my Bible. I don't always wanna go and do the right things. I don't wanna deal with my, with my, my desires inside my heart and stuff like that I, I, sometimes, but, but I, I want to make this decision to follow Christ and I just find it's really, really hard. Now. This time I'm coming, and I've decided I want, the, I want to be a transgressor. I want to be a sinner. I just want to do my own way. I come up here and I go, ah, I'm following the impulses of my heart, the desires. This is easy. Man, this is easy. Until I get down here to consequence, and here's what the consequence does. It goes, pow. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wait a second. No, no. Carry on the legacy. All right? 